So there was this guy named Gold Roger and he left a bunch of treasure when he died. After that, they meet a talking reindeer who's actually a doctor. But then, a giant bear man sends Luffy to an island of Amazonian women. So, an evil ghost scientist accidentally turns the son of a samurai into a dragon. Then, the Straw Hats become world famous after crashing a wedding. And that's how Luffy becomes king of the pirates! Do you remember Maguzi? Yeah, what about Maguzi? So, the Ma Cartoon Network? Yeah, it was like, okay, so do you remember Toonami, like, before it was, like, the Saturday Night yeah. Vlog? Yeah, so, like, I don't know why, but they, like, put Toonami on Saturday nights, and then just, like, made Maguzi, which was just, like, weirder Toonami. But anyway, uh, Maguzi is where I found out, or I started watching One Piece. I knew what it was, because it was on Foxbox before that. Yeah, but that's I, was, I watched it. I was a kid's WB kid, because I like Pokemon, and so I never watched Foxbox, but when it came to Maguzi, I uh, I watched it on Maguzi, and that's important today because uh, that's, I'm pretty sure they picked up during the Berarty arc, because that's what uh, I remember. I don't, I don't remember, like, maybe the last few episodes of Surat Village, but definitely Berarty. I remember this. Like, was it a different dub? It was for the Foxbox one. No, it was, it was still, the four kids one. Yeah, okay. it was still the four kids one. Yeah, there's there only ever like one of the dub at the time called like Odex, which is I think the Filipino dub. Uh, and then yeah. later on, Funimation took over, but that's like way later. But yeah, that's where we get introduced to the uh, some of our some of my favorite characters in the entire series is is through Maguzi of all places. What was Sanji? Was Sanji French? No, he was or... Brooklyn. He was he had a Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Accent, like, he sounded like, like Joey. Joey. Yeah, yeah, that's like what it was. Joey yeah. from Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. 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 Welcome to episode three of the Sun Peace Podcast. I'm Allie. I'm Hadrian. Uh, and today, as I've already alluded to, we're going to be talking about the Bar Bartier. Barati. I'm going to say it like 17 times this episode. Just, just Baratier. Baratier. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the the bar. I already forgot what you said. Baratier art. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, last Don't episode, um, Luffy, Nami, and Zoro helped uh, Usopp defend Captain Kuro from their uh, from Usopp's village. And now the group is, uh, they got their, their ship, the Going Merry, or the Merry Go, and they are now heading towards the Grand Line. Um, and they start off in this arc by painting their Jolly Roger. Um, and this is a really funny scene because uh, we learned something about Usopp is that he's actually a really good artist because uh, Luffy has an idea for the Jolly Roger, which is just a skull and crossbones Jolly Roger with a straw hat, right? Like he has the straw hat, they're the straw hat pirates. Um, and so he tries to draw it on the flag and it's, it's atrocious. It's disgusting to look at, um, but Usopp, Usopp does it, and it turns out to be pretty good. And so now that they have their own ship, they put their own flag on there, and now they are officially the Straw Hat Pirates with their own Jolly Roger. Uh, they won't mention this until, like, way, way later, but um, putting up, like, kind of in real life, putting up any Jolly Roger is, like... Attack on the government. Attack on the world yeah. government. Yeah. It, it is, it is, you are, like... You're in a lot of trouble from then on out. You're so now, not a civilian anymore. No, you can be a, you especially can be especially when it's a Jolly Roger that looks like you. No plausible deniability anymore. Uh, straight up, none of it. Um, so they do this, and then Luffy decides he wants to do target practice with the uh, the cannons on the ship, and he so he like starts aiming at this rock. He misses completely. Uh, Usopp nails it immediately because he's, Cause a, he's sniper. a sniper. Um, of course, right? yeah. And so, uh, so Usopp like knocks his like little like rock cropping out. Um, when suddenly this dude runs up onto the ship. His name is Johnny, um, and he's a bounty hunter. And he's extremely angry, uh, but he's also like very quickly like put down by Luffy. But then Zoro realizes who this is. He's like, "Hey, hey, Johnny, where's Usaku?" And he's like, that's the problem. Uh, your guys here are shooting at the ship that we're sitting on. Like, he's like, Yusaku is sick, uh, and he's on this island, and you you launched it at it. Um, and so Luffy is immediately very apologetic, and they're like, oh, we did not realize what was happening. And they reveal that um, 
there, so Johnny and Yasaka, who we'll about to meet in a second, because they take it, they rescue them off of the uh, rock cropping and bring them onto the the merry go, and they were bounty hunters back in the day who uh, teamed up with Zoro, and so they all consider themselves to be brothers. They're not blood related, um, but they are kind of like sworn brothers to a degree. They call each other bro. Yeah, it's like it's like you and your homies. Yes, and they're like, up, bro? and like Johnny and Yasaka are like paired up, like they're never not together basically um but when they pull him on board nami realizes because uh johnny says that yusaka like his old his old wounds are coming open and nami's like that's scurvy like you that's yeah you're you're you have scurvy now the only time scurvy i think ever gets mentioned i don't feel like they ever talk about like real world illnesses that affect pirates every year. No, partially uh, because uh, immediately after this, Luffy's is like, wow, you're really smart. And and Nami's like, you're incredibly dumb to not even know what what scurvy is. And they realize that they really need a cook. They like really need a cook because uh, Nami is like, you know, get him some limes and uh, Luffy and Usopp just feed him some limes and he recovers instantly, which is not how that works. But That's not how that works at all. <laughs> they give him some limes, he recovers, and then they realize that they need um, uh, Cook as their as their next member. And Johnny and Sako point out that uh, they point them in the direction of this island, this floating restaurant called the Baratier. Um, and they, however, they warn them that it's close to the Grand Line, and so it's very dangerous because tough people freak, tough people frequent it including the strongest swordsman in the world, Hawkeye Mihawk. And this is be very important when we get to that later episode. And also because like strong cooks or strong pirates frequent the restaurant, the cooks are pretty strong too. Yes, and Luffy's They're like well known. Yes, and so yeah. Luffy um, is hoping that uh, he can grab one. Also, something to note here, this is a running gag. When they're talking about uh, positions that they desperately need, Luffy mentions a musician. He says he wants a musician. Uh, he'll keep bringing this up for like hundreds of chapters um, for a long, long time. So when the Straw Hats do arrive at the Barati A, uh, this guy named uh, Lieutenant Iron Fist Full Body, um, he tries to sink their ship with the Cannonball, but Luffy goes into like a uh, gum gum balloon mode, I think it's called, and bounces it uh, off of the ship, which is like, I guess, I guess he's like trying not to like sink anything. Because he could have just, like, taken the shot and, like, had it bounce back directly Straight at the back. ship. Yeah. But I guess he's trying to, like, let it bounce off. But it bounces off onto the Baratier and, like, takes off, like, a huge section of, like, the housing part of the Baratier. Um, and so <laughs> Luffy has to go inside and speak to the manager, the owner of this ship, uh, who is a guy named Zeph, who is a man with a peg leg. Yes. And, he, and his mustache is, like... Yeah, it's it's like really well. Yeah, uh, it's like very it's very nice. It's very it's got like a little bit of a beard. Um, also, there's a very funny gag where uh, Luffy mistakenly assumes that uh, he caused him to lose his leg. He's like, oh, oh no, yes. I did that oh, to no, you. Oh no, I shot on his leg. Oh, <laughs> and he's like, man. he's like, this has happened a long time. Like, um, but uh, Zeph oh yeah, supporting so Zeph uh, is a he's the head chef yes. or cook, right? Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah. dressed up in cook garb. Yes, like the, the chef, like the yeah, like the white linen with the top hat, um, and, he, and he's like a pretty rough, rough and tumble dude. Um, and so is the whole island ship. Uh, that makes sense, right? Like the deal with pirates need to be tough, and he he is very tough. Um, and he tells Luffy that as punishment, he has to work to pay off his debts for a year as a as a chore boy. And they argue for a while. Luffy's like, I'm not doing that. He's like, he's like, I'll let you tell me one week. And he's like, that's not how this works. You don't get to tell me what I get to tell you. Um, but he, uh, so anyway, um, we cut away from there and we go inside the ship and we see the Marine that just attacked Luffy full body. He is on a date. He's a very hot kind of guy. He's like very nice and dressed up, but he's like trying to impress his date. And one of the chefs who is currently working as one of the waiters also named Sanji rolls up and just completely embarrasses him. He like tells him. The wine that he thinks he's drinking is wrong. He like doesn't know food. He's also flirting with the woman because he's also very suave and kind of hot and dressed up nice. Um, and 
Then Full Body finds a fly in his soup, and he like threatens. He like threatens Sanji. He's like, he's like, I'm not eating the soup. I'm gonna throw it away. I'm gonna beat your ass. And we just cut away to Sanji like grabbing him by the head, and he is completely bloodied. Like he like instantly KO'd Full Body um, with no yeah. damage to him. So I want to. It's important to know that like Sanji whoops his ass, but he whoops his ass for two reasons. One trying to lie about the fly in his soup and two uh full body wastes his soup yeah right and he kicks his ass for wasting food essentially yes uh sanji's uh personal creed is food is never to be wasted um he also has a very funny line where he threatens uh full body threatens to close down the baratier and sanji tells him close this down uh not if i close you down first um so then Zeph comes out from dealing with Luffy and he comes to address the commotion and he hits and then like full body's like, thank God someone's rational here to deal with this. And Zeph knocks out both Sanji and full body, um, basically saying that like they're both insolent brats and that they're they like and it, so full body. So then while they're doing this, while, like while full body's like, on the ground, like I hate this. What the fuck is happening here? This is so ridiculous. One of his marines rushes in and tells them that one of the Krieg pirates uh, that uh, that they had captured, he beat up seven marines and he escaped. Even though Full Body's like, he was half dead from starvation when we found him three days ago and we have not fed him since. Which I'm pretty sure is a war crime or at least like a crime against humanity that this marine is like purposely not feeding uh, this pirate who's like jailed. Um... Golden Age of Piracy, baby. Yeah, dude, they... I guess two wrongs do make a right. That's at least what Full Body thinks. Um, so then... Uh, this pirate then comes up, he shoots that marine, and he sits down, he demands food, and then one of the other chefs... Oh, he's like, uh... They, so, one of the chefs comes up, Patty, and he kind of looks like Popeye. Yeah, he does. Like, he has, like, the Popeye arms, and I think he's bald? I can't remember. I think he is. But he, yeah. So he he comes up and he asks, like, can you pay for the food? Like, you can't just sit here and then demand food. Like, you gotta pay for it. Right? And the pirate pulls out a pistol and puts it to his uh, head. And he's like, do you accept lead? That <laughs> shit was kind of crazy. It was like, it was badass. But Patty, yeah. Patty's like, basically immediately punches the shit out of him he's like if you can't pay you're not a customer we treat customers right but we don't treat rabble rousers coming at the cause trouble yeah right and the thing about patty is that he is uh obsessed with pleasing the customer like although he's really bad at it and it's like it's pretty shocking when he's like you're not a customer because at this point like like he's willing to do anything for these people and he's like but you're not a customer so he kicks him out uh very easily he kicks him out even though he just this guy just like beat up submarines patty's like kicks him out um, but Sanji, who the guy we just met earlier, brings food to him. Um, and he's like, he's like, I don't really care who you are, or what you've done. He's like, my job is to feed you. Um, and if you're hungry, I'll bring you food. I don't care if you can afford to or not. And he uh, breaks down into tears. He says it's the best food he's ever had in his life. Um, and he thanks them, um, which Luffy sees because he's still kind of kicking around. And he sees his interaction and he says to himself, I found you, my cook. Um... So then Luffy walks over to this to them outside and he like talks to them for a bit. And Sanji tells Luffy that Zeph was once uh, a pirate who cooked for uh, another famous pirate. Which is, this this line is so weird to me for several reasons. The first of which is we'll find out a little bit Zeph's backstory. And the idea that he was under a pirate does not come up again, right? However, I think... Theory? I think... This was supposed to be our first introduction to one of uh, Roger's former crew members. So throughout the series of One Piece, including very soon, like not this episode yeah. or next episode, but a couple episodes from now, we will meet a former member of Roger's crew. And they're all, all like really old pirates because they've, you know, they've retired now. And to this day, like in 2023, like we still, we know a lot about Roger's crew, he does not have a cook that we a know cook, about. Yeah, you're right. And and like Zeph is kind of like a strong and rough and tumble dude. Um, and he knows a lot about the Grand Line. And I feel like this was 
like supposed to be brought up and he just like it's like instantly got forgotten about but i like in my head i want zeph to be roger's former cook um but that's that's a theory that's that's not confirmed we just know that he was uh he's a very famous pirate cook um and then luffy asks Sanji to join his crew um but he declines um which luffy declines his his declination yes he also mentions that his dream right luffy just tells every good person he meets or whatever that his dream like offer him he just walks up to them hey you heard about my dream to be king of the pirates like it's kind of funny he does yeah he does this all the time this is also um it's been a while since we've seen this because he didn't he didn't really do this with Usopp. but this is a trend of him like demanding people to join his crew um and he takes he does not take no for an answer um and but are we gonna mention about Jin? Because, like, Jin is kind of part of this conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, he's still there. And when Luffy says, oh, yeah, he wants to be king of the pirates and sail the Grand Line, uh, Jin's face, like, goes dark. Yeah, like, so before we even get to that point, uh, as Luffy is talking about this, this pirate that, that uh, Sanji has fed tells them that his name is Jin, like you just said. And he's one of Don, Don Krieg's pirates. Like we mentioned earlier, the Krieg pirates is uh, one of the guy's full title is Don Krieg. And that he warns Luffy of the Grand Line. It basically says that it's a fool's errand to try to become king of the pirates. You're not ready for it. Um, which then we cut back to the Krieg pirates. I'm sorry, we cut back to the, the cooks of uh, the Baratier. And they reveal that Don Krieg is, quote, the meanest pirate in the East Blue. And that he commands an arm, armada of 50 ships and 5,000 pirates. Which is a lot. I, I think about this a lot because I remember the first episode I said that um, 200 pirates is a lot for Gaimon's crew. Which it is. Like to this day like there's only a handful of ships that we like uh, crews that we know about that have more than that. But I also forget how early on we got introduced to a guy with an actual armada and fleet. With like 5,000 um, people. And so while they do that, Jin leaves on a small boat that Sanji let him borrow, and Luffy becomes a chore boy uh, for Zeph, although he is extremely awful at it. He he, he sucks. There's a really funny line where he's like washing dishes and he keeps breaking them, and uh, and Zeph asks him, he's like he's like, how many plates have you broken? He's like, oh, I lost count. He breaks more of them (laughs) because he like he also. Yeah, yeah, he like burns his hands on the walk too. Oh yeah, yeah. and he's, he's just eating the food for the customers. Yeah, like, he's so yeah. bad at this at this job. Um, it almost feels like intentional, but I think he's just really bad. Um, and then somewhere else in the East Blue, Jin has returned to Don Creek and promises to lead him back to the Baratie. And so, meanwhile, back in the Baratie, uh, Luffy's a chore boy, and Nami, Usopp, and Zoro have finally just got on to the Baratier to have dinner, um, and they, they tease him, um, they, they, they tease him about being this chore boy, and they're like, oh, so, so, so I guess we're no longer pirates, huh? Um, and, you know, they're having a good time or whatever, but then, uh, Zeph suddenly just out of nowhere tells Sanji that he no longer needs him, and that he should follow his heart and be a pirate. Uh, he tells him that he's dead weight, that the other crooks don't like him, and that his cooking is lousy. Which this pisses Sanji off. He does not care what you say about him, but if you uh, insult his cooking, oh, it's it is fight on sight. Uh, True. He will, and so they start. Um, wait, they, wait, 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 wait! I we got to mention that Sanji has been flirting with Nami. Oh yes. Right, like hard flirting with Nami. That's his thing. He he flirts with the ladies, right? Yeah. And he he says something funny, right? Uh while he's at the table he says something funny he's like it's like along the lines of i'll i'll even be a pirate if it means i can be with you oh yeah right so um and she like she's very good at like using her her feminine charm right and so she um she's like oh cook the food here is very expensive and he's like for you it's free he's like okay okay, cool (laughs) and then she kind of leaves at this point um but that's sanji's thing so like if we talked about before about like um Usopp being a scaredy cat, Sanji is a, a flirt, bordering on pervert sometimes. Um, but more than anything, he is he's is a flirt. He's kind of he raises anywhere from like simp to pervert. He's like in the spectrum. Um, but right now he's just kind of a simp and, and a flirt. Um, and Nami's into him at this point. 
Although she's just Chinese, and later on she will not be, but it is what it is. Um, and so, so Sanji then tells Zeph that he'll never leave and that he, he'll cook there um, forever. And so then two days pass, which is one of the few times we actually get like a confirmation of like time passing in One Piece. Um, but two days pass, and Jin returns with Krieg, um, but his head ship is noticeably damaged. It's like falling apart everywhere. It looks like it's been like cut. And it was kind of almost like a ghost ship, almost. Um, and Jen guides him to this restaurant where he begs for food and water um, for both of them. But Patty and the and the guests refuse him and even threaten to call the Marines to come arrest both of them because they don't want anything to do with the meanest man in the East Blue. Um, but then Sanji kicks Patty out of the way and he feeds Krieg um, before one of the other cooks tells him that Krieg is known for his underhanded tactics. Uh, and that he should not trust him whatsoever. And then on cue, uh, despite Jin trying not like trying to like get him to, to stop doing it, Krieg attacks Sanji uh, and declares that he'll take over the restaurant uh, as his new ship. Um, and he makes this point later that like the ship is perfect for them because he can like sneak through the Grand Line undetected because no one will expect a um, a restaurant to be full of like actual pirates, right? Which is such a dumb thing to say because, like, if you become famous enough, people are just going to say, hey, watch out for the ship that looks like a restaurant. It has a bunch of pirates on it. Like, it's not a real it's not a real restaurant. But yeah. whatever. Greek's not a very okay. smart man. I want to mention that, like, when Krieg backstabs uh, Sanji, like, he just attacks him. Uh, Jin looks kind of distraught. Yes. At- him doing this like because sanji fed him when he was starving so to see his boss his leader like not do the same or not have the same respect for the act of like feeding someone when they're starving as him he kind of feels bad about it but that's his boss so he like he won't say anything right now. yeah it, it looks at this point sort of like Jin is um like also being underhanded and like trying to um, like deceive Sanji by basically like, oh look, I'm I'm so sorry. Like, um, but Jin is pretty. Sincere. He gets slapped down too. Yeah, I'm he, pretty sure he gets slapped down too. Uh, for like even saying to like his that, boss like, like hey man, he fed us. Yeah, yeah, because um, yeah. he he does not like he does not care. So then Creek tells him that he has a hundred men on his ship who are dying of hunger and thirst. Some of them are also just dead already, um, and that he needs them the fed. needs them fed. So the other cooks uh, refuse, but Sanji begins to prepare their food, telling his co-workers, they're unredeemable villains, but my job is to feed people, not to judge them. If a man is hungry, I feed him. That's a cook's job. Um, and he goes back to the kitchen and making all of this food. Uh, so then Patty attacks the sh- Creek. Sorry. Yeah, the chef's mutiny. Yeah. They they basically say, yeah, you can cook for him, but we not, we not finna cook for him. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. And so Patty attacks Creek. Um, and it looks like they, like, easily, like, beat him. He, like, fires a cannon at him and does nothing. Uh, or, or it looks like it, like, takes him out. However, Krieg reveals that he's wearing armor, like, plate mail. Um, with, like, like, his, his Jolly Roger is, like, a skull and, like, it's, it's, like, um, it's hourglasses on the Jolly Roger. Because the, the idea is that, like, when you see him, your time is up. He's um, kind of, like, kind of, it's like Iron Man, almost. like it's, A little bit, yeah, like, like, medieval yeah. Iron Man. Um, yeah. It's also, this is pretty interesting. This is like one of the more abstract Jolly Rogers. Later on, they'll be pretty straight for like, they're like based on somebody's like design or like something. This is like a little more abstract. Um, cause it's like the hourglass thing. Um, so however, he, like he has this, this plate armor and he retaliates by shooting up the restaurant with like, like a huge arsenal of weapons. He like shoots it all up. Um, and to get him to stop, Zeph drops the food off for Krieg's crew and, tell, and tells him to leave um, after mocking him for leaving the Grand Line. Um, because it's known at this point that he went to the Grand Line and now he's come back. Um, that, yeah. And so so Zeph makes fun of him for it. Um, and when the when the other chefs say Zeph's name, uh, Krieg realizes like who Zeph is. And knows that he was uh, a very like powerful pirate back in his day, um, but now he's a washed up cook. As as Creed they called him, uh, I believe Red Red, red Leg Zeph. 
because yeah, right. he uses his legs to uh, to attack people because as he says uh, oh no it was red shoes uh, they it was so, red... yeah it's kind of it depends on which translation you're looking at oh, uh, okay. the the one that I guess you and I read uses red shoes um, but uh, like I think the more official transliteration is like red leg. So that like, makes more sense. Yeah, so you can you can kind of say both, but I go with red leg because it sounds cooler. Like red shoes yeah. sounds a little goofy. Because um, he gets blo- his enemy's blood on his all over his on legs. his legs. And his, yeah. yeah. Um, but it, the point he makes is that a chef only fights with their feet because uh, they need their hands uh, to cook with, and so their hands get damaged. They they've messed up, right? Which is why which is why Seth doesn't care about he like has a peg leg. That's not a big deal because he can still cook, right? Um, And so, Krieg then mentions that because Zeph went to the Grand Line and returned, he kept a logbook and demands it from Zeph, hoping that Zeph's knowledge, plus his new armada, which which he's going to build up again, will be enough to survive the waters. Um, Which, this is the first time that we've heard of a character go to the Grand Line and, like, return, like, like willingly. Like, this is the first time we've heard a character, well, Krieg is the first character we've seen return, although, like, Clearly not under his own volition because the ship is destroyed and his people are messed up and they're all dying and stuff. But Zeph just came back on his own, um, and he seems to be okay Krieg with it. Krieg only made it seven days. Krieg, yeah, Krieg makes it seven yeah. days, yeah. Um, not even, or like not even, or something like that. It's pretty crazy. Um, and so he then says that like with this knowledge, like he's like, give me your logbook and your ship. And he's like, with this ship, the logbook, and my new armada that I'll build up, I will become. King of the Pirates, which Luffy goes, Gigi. hold on, no, 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 yeah. I'm going to be King of the Pirates. GG, it's over. You, st- you um, said you wanted to be King of the Pirates in front of Luffy, that activates him. It's like, yeah, this is, now that you over. say that, this is the first character to um, not only mock Luffy, but actively want to become King of the Pirates. Like, he's the first villain to do that. Um, every other villain so far has like been like, this is too much, like, you're ridiculous. Yeah, and Buggy, I think, he gave up and was like, I'll just find uh, silver or... All the treasure in the world. Yeah. yeah. But that's, that's, we don't so, know about that yet. That's oh, yet. spoilers. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. we're muting that shit. We're, yeah. we're gonna, <laughs> that, that doesn't come until way later. Um, okay, okay. But yeah, like, he wants all the treasure in the world. And then Kuro just wanted to, to not be a pirate anymore. Um, but Don Creek is the first villain to actively want to become king of the pirates which luffy does not not take too kindly to um and then krieg mocks him again and reveals that his entire um, his entire armada was destroyed in seven days uh, and they don't mention this at this point but by a single person by a single dude um which we'll get to that in a couple of minutes but takes out his whole thing but then um and that so that but then he leaves to go feed his other crew members um and then the cooks become angry uh with Sanji for feeding the enemy, and also for Zeph for, like, for going along with him. Um, but Zeph backs him up, asking if they've ever been truly hungry, like, starving to death on the open ocean. Then Jin apologizes for bringing this on Sanji, but Sanji just says, listen, my obligation is fulfilled. He's like, I will feed you, um, but now that you're full, I have no, like, I have no qualms with attacking you. And if you guys try to, uh, if you guys try to board this ship, uh, I will kill all of you, including you, so... So that's on now. So then uh, Luffy asks Jin about the Grand Line, but Jin barely tells him that he barely remembers anything aside from the one man who destroyed their entire armada. The man with piercing hawk eyes, the one Zoro has been searching for, Hawkeye Mihawk. Um, and then Sanji asks Jin if they made Mihawk mad, uh, but Zeph responds by saying they probably interrupted his nap, um, which Jin gets angry at. He's like, why are you, like, you're insulting my crew, like, by like, making this joke. He's like, he's like, I'm not making a joke. That's just like what the Grand Line is like. Sometimes like strong people would just like do things for the hell of it. Um, and then which like excites Luffy, which is very on point. Cause he's like, oh, any- anything can happen on the Grand Line. Like even like getting your entire armada destroyed by a single guy who's like angry. That's really cool. And then Zoro gets excited because um, now they know where Mihawk is, who is like the greatest swordsman in the world and his, his, his rival. Like he's got to beat him to become the greatest swordsman in the world. Um, which Sanji tells them that they're they're both fools just waiting to be killed because their dreams are too grand for themselves. 
Uh, but Zoro responds by saying, True enough, but don't insult us. The day I decided to be the world's greatest swordsman, I gave I gave myself up for dead. Nobody calls me a fool but me. Um, which is, again, like, Oda loves having these characters um, that would rather chase their dreams and die than live and be cowards. Um, yep. And this is, like, also the first time we've seen Zoro, like, really excited to, like, actually, like, own, for his own volition, like, he, he, this is his dream, and he's going to attain it uh, at any cost. Um, so then back on Creek Ship, his crew has regained their strength uh, from the food that they all ate, and they begin boarding the Bratier, but then as they do, their ship is clean, cleaved clean in half. Um, and Zoro, Luffy, and Usopp are really worried, because their ship is still out there, like, also in the dock. Also with Nami, Johnny, and Yusaku who are back on the ship and like they need to like, like oh shit, like what happened to them? What, what was going on? Um, but as they like rush over to it, Johnny and Yusaku are like in the ocean. So when they pull them out, they tell them that like Nami stole all of their treasure and pushed them overboard and told them that their alliance with Luffy was temporary and that Nami stole their, sh Nami stole their ship with all of their treasure, including Johnny and Yusaku's treasure, and uh, sailed off. Um, which... I mentioned before, like Nami never said she was joining the crew. Um, she made it very clear that she had she wanted nothing to do with pirates, um, and that this was always meant to be temporary. And this is where we see it, uh, where she she leaves. Um, so, but Johnny and Saka reveal that they still have their boat, um, which Luffy wants to use to chase after her. But Zoro's like, just let her go. Like she's not worth it. And Luffy tells him, No, Nami is our navigator. No one else can be our navigator. I want Nami. And then we see on the ship, uh, Nami says to herself that Luffy, Zoro, and Usopp were good guys, and if they meet again, she hopes that they'll let her join them. And then she starts crying and says, I can't wait to be free, Bellamere. Um, and it's very... Oh God, Nami is... Yeah. It's, but it shows that she's changed. Like, like, as you keep bringing up the last few episodes, like, she has now gone from all pirates are bad to... Maybe the ones that I knew were bad, and that there can be good ones. She um, wants to meet them again, but she can't. Yes, yeah, so right she, now she has to and like free she, herself, well, she also wants to meet them, and she, and but she even says like, I hope they let me join them again because she knows that she should be ashamed because like they were friends to her, like um, and that she hates that she had to, she hates she hates that she did this to them, which is like I think the first time we've ever seen her be remorseful and regretful, um. And we will see Nami eventually, but for right now, we go back to the Baratier, and before they can, uh, so before Luffy, Zoro, and Usopp can leave to go find Nami, Zeph declares that Mihawk has arrived at the Baratier. Alright, so, I'll take over for here. Mihawk pulls up, right? He's like, to give a description of Mihawk, he's like this goatee vampire looking dude. And he's floating in the middle of the ocean in a coffin-shaped rowboat. Yeah. Right? It's not even a full ship. It's like a little kind of sailboat, a little coffin rowboat that he's pulled up in. Right? And this, of course, activates Zoro. Right? He's like, he pulls up. He's like, oh, if you're looking for fun, I can give you fun. Yeah. I don't... This is... This goes to show, like you said, Oda's, like, thing of, like, chasing your dreams no matter what. Because we just saw this man cut an entire ship in half, right? And Zoro's instantly like, and let's go. It's importantly to note, because everyone's like, how did he do that? Where is his weapon at? And Zeph points out, his weapon is a sword on his back. It's just a gigantic yeah. sword. And he cleaved it just with, like, the concussive force of his slash. It's insane. Yes. Right? Uh, also, for added description, he does have that uh, little necklace. Yeah. He, he has a little cross, cross. necklace. He, yeah, so he has a lot of Christian imagery. Um, mm -hmm. More like medieval Baroque-ish imagery, so it's like very dark. Oda loves crosses and like nuns and stuff. We'll see a lot of those yeah. throughout the series. But the first instruction to like Christian imagery we get is like this fucking vampire dude. Mm-hmm. So, Zoro pulls up, he's like, if you're looking for fun, I'll give you fun. And Mihawk basically disses him instantly, calling him weak and pathetic. He's like, you're not even worth my time. He's like, if you 
if you call yourself a competent swordsman, you should be able to tell that you're completely outmatched right now, right? So like, what gives you the confidence to to challenge me, right? And Zoro replies, you know, it's not confidence, it's ambition, and a promise to a friend, right? And at that moment, he puts on the do rag, <laughs> right? I can't. I don't know if the do rag is green or black. Like yeah, it, in the anime, sometimes it's like tinted green, and then sometimes, sometimes it it's is black. green, but sometimes it's just full on black. Yeah, yeah, it's a little hard to hard to yeah, because like his theme is green. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So he puts on his do rag. That's that means he's about to get serious. It's like uh, Ash flipping <laughs> the hat around, right? Um, and this sets up Zoro versus Mihawk. So Zoro challenges Mihawk to a duel. Um, and Mihawk, he pulls a knife out. But from the cross It's necklace. from the cross. Yeah. So he has this cross necklace. It's, it's a tiny, maybe like one or one inch or one it's, and a half inch necklace, right? It's like smaller or, than like a butter knife. Yeah. Yeah. And he just pulls the knife out from his necklace. He's like... This is all I need to body you right here. Like, you don't even get my my sword at this point, right? Zoro is confused by this. Mihawk tells him that, like, he isn't a fool and that he hunts rab... Or he isn't a fool <laughs> enough to hunt rabbits with a cannon. I finally got it out, sorry. <laughs> but this was a cool line. Yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm not going to straight up destroy you even though I can, right? Yeah, like, like let's make like, it this interesting. Is, this is a challenge, not a slaughter. Yeah, basically. It, this is, exactly. This is also the first time I think that we really get to because Mihawk mentions that the East Blue is the weakest of the four seas. And this is something mm. we'll we'll see uh, kind of like mentioned here and there, but um, he like makes it clear that like the East Blue, like where they're at right now, is the weakest by far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he he says he's not fool enough to hunt rabbits with the cannon. But he does praise Zoro for having a reputation this or early because he's uh, known as a pirate hunter. But he's like, you're still just a bunny, yeah. right? So this is all I need. Which, um, sorry, really quick. This is interesting. For This reminds me that like when he pulls out the three swords, everyone comments that, like, oh, it's pirate hunter Zoro. Like, mm-hmm. for the for the first, like, like, 150 chapters or so, this is how people know Luffy is strong because no one knows who Luffy is, but they know who Zoro is, and they basically say that, like if this guy is subordinate to Luffy, he must be even more powerful than like the pirate hunter guy. Mihawk pulls out the smallest knife in the world, and Zoro says, "Don't get cocky," and he rushes him. Right? Uh, Mihawk calls him a small frog croaking in his puddle, <laughs> which is. A creative insult to say the least right yeah and and he's like let me show you how big the world actually is right so Zoro tries to hit him with a three sword strike uh, he calls it onigiri I believe and but Mihawk just blocks all the swords with his tiny little knife right and so Zoro tries to push back at him with all three swords right but he realizes he's not budging not even like an inch Mihawk has completely stopped his attack with his tiny little necklace life and then at this moment Zoro realized that he fucked up oh yeah right he 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 starts to realize in his head like oh man I might be screwed if I can't even hit him with three so I have three swords and he's blocked with a tiny little pocket knife yeah um so he switches sword stances and he like releases a flurry of strikes and zoro or mihawk just blocks every single one of them every swing and zoro's going full strength and he's just blocking casually right uh it's kind of funny uh that zoro at this moment zoro is getting outclassed so badly that he starts getting power of friendship flashbacks like yeah. we all know what happens to a character when he starts to get those in the middle of a fight like he's thinking about luffy he's thinking about uh the promise he made to uh karina 
like but you know like if a character is getting power of friendship fat flashbacks it's about, it's about it's either about, about to be the most yeah. one-sided it's, it's, a, it's the most one-sided slap down of all time one way or the mm-hmm. other um and it's not looking yeah. good for Zoro. It, <laughs> it's not looking good for him right so mihawk just starts talking more shit to him calling him weak why are you even trying he starts talking shit to him calling him weak why are you even trying and props to johnny and yusuke because they try to help they jump in and help their bro they can't just stand by while he's getting bodied however luffy like holds them back from yep. jumping in he's like are you crazy like first off this is zoro's fight this is yep. his dream he has to do it right yeah and he has to is- do it himself this is, a, again, an example over and over again. Luffy does, like, he will not interrupt someone else's dream, right? So, like, he knows that Zoro's cooked. Like, he, yeah. he has no, like, no, like, misgivings about the situation at hand. Like, he knows Zoro is going to be beaten. But that's Zoro's choice to make. And that he, he doesn't, like, doesn't care um, about stepping in because that would be an insult to Zoro. Exactly. So... Zoro goes for another named attack. This time it's called Tiger Hunt. And while he's about to swing, like in the middle of his swing, Mihawk just stabs him in the chest with the knife. Um, Zoro continues to walk forward instead of falling back with the knife in his chest. And Mihawk's like, bro, do you have a death wish? Like, what are you doing? Why are you refusing to like fall down and admit defeat? And Zoro's like, I can't retreat even one step. And Mihawk's like, even if it means death? And Zoro replies, I prefer death to defeat, which was cold. That yeah. shit was cold. I have that exact same quote in my notes. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. So Mihawk gives him a bit of respect for his conviction, and he tells Zoro to tell him his name. He's like, you know, I'll honor you with knowing your name at least, yeah. right? And he says that the honor he will honor the swordsman code and send him to his death yeah with with the real blade with with the yeah with his real blade essentially the blade he cut the ship in half with um so he proceeds to pull out the giant cross sword on his back and they both prepare to strike right zoro uses another attack we assume this is like his strongest attack he has access to at this point it's called 3000 worlds which is a cool name for an attack right uh so mihawk's ready to strike he he readies up his strike zoro uses his 3000 worlds and they clash and one of zoro's swords just shatters instantly two of them and two of them actually yes uh of course, you know the only sword to survive is the one given to him by Kalina. Yeah, right? Wada, yeah, Wada Ujimonji is still around. This Queen of Sword. You can't that one? If that one, honest to God, it has that flawed one, armor. It does have flawed armor. <laughs> if that one shattered, I, I think Zoro just ends it right there. If that one shattered, he's yeah. like, all right, I'm done. Exactly. Uh, so Zoro gets cut in the stomach, and he turns around and he offers his his uh, chest to Mihawk, and Mihawk's confused. And Zoro smiles, or he smiles and tells him, "Scars on the back are a swordsman's shame." So Mihawk smiles and just cuts him down right then and there. And that, Zoro falls into the ocean. That line is like one of Zoro's like top tier lines. Yes. Like it's even as a kid when I watched this, this line is like most left intact in the four kids dub, I think. And it stuck with me. Like I'm like, all right, this is cool. This is. I think this is the moment, honestly, where I was like, oh, One Piece is cool. Yeah. Like, it's... Ugh, I love this scene. There, There's another scene like this, but that's way later down, yeah. The, oh, yeah. down the road. But Zoro, just Zoro, the Zoro has some good scenes. Yes. Um, so Mihawk respects that, you know, he respects the fire-ass line that Zoro just said, and then he, but he smiles while he cuts him down still. Um, and he falls into the ocean, and Johnny and Yusuke, they both jump into the water after him. Um, at this point, Luffy, who's been standing on the sidelines, 
he bum rushes Mihawk, but Mihawk just dodges it easily, and he tells him, you know, you did well for letting your crewmate fight his own battle, and I left him alive because, you know, to give him a modicum of respect. Uh, just as he says this, Johnny and his bro pull him out of the water and onto a piece of the broken ship, and he yells out to Zoro, or he yells out towards Zoro. Towards Mihawk? Or, or Mihawk yells out towards Zoro, my name is Dracul Mihawk and it's too f- soon for you to die. Travel the world, get stronger, and I'll be waiting for you at the top. Strive to surpass me. Right? And <laughs> Such a cool he line. looks at Yeah, that was a cool line as well. Um, he looks at Luffy and he asks Luffy his goal, Mihawk does. And Luffy says, King of the Pirates, of course, like he always does. And Mihawk is like, damn. That's even more crazy than trying to surpass me. Like, good luck. <laughs> right? Uh, Zoro, at this point, he's basically dying. Right? He just got sliced in the chest by the black blade of Dracul Mihawk, his famous sword, right? And while Z- Zoro's basically dying, Usopp and the, the bros... Uh, Johnny and Yusuke, they're trying to like stabilize him because he's on the brink of death. Um, but all of a sudden, from the brink of death, Zoro lifts his swords up, lifts his sword up, and he's like, "Can you hear me, Luffy? Like, did you worry about me? If I failed to become the world's greatest swordsman, you'd be disappointed, right?" The homies are like begging him to save his strength like please like shut the f- like shut up bro like you are bleeding out but uh, Zoro with his arm raised up with his sword continues his speech he's like never again I'll never lose again from here until I become the world's greatest swordsman you got a problem with that king of the pirates no nope. and Luffy smiles and he 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 agrees right and Mihawk sees this and he says, like, you guys make a good team and he hopes to see him in the future. Yep. Yeah. So that scene, this. Yeah, this is another this scene, top tier. This section is like such a top tier, like of all time, top tier Zoro segment. Yeah. And it really sets up his motivation. He has yes. a concrete uh endpoint to his goal now like just being the best swordsman ever is whatever but he's met the greatest swordsman ever he's fought him and now he has something to aspire to so for the rest of the series zoro will be aspiring to beat mihawk yeah that that is is his rival the entire rest of the series and it's kind of crazy like mihawk showed his strength like this is a fraction of of mihawk's strength and even that's insane cutting a giant ship in half dueling a dude who's well known in the area with a tiny ass pocket knife like yeah so i think the reason that mihawk respects zoro is not only because he's like willing to like stand up and fight him but because his goal is like not to like it's it's not he only wants to beat mihawk because mihawk has the title it's like, it's not about Mihawk, it's about the title, right? And I think that, like, because Zoro, like, sees beyond Mihawk, I think that that is what inspires him. Um, like, he's more concerned with uh, what it means to be the greatest swordsman in the world and not just, like, beating the man who is the greatest swordsman in the world. Exactly. Yeah. And I think Mihawk want Zoro to survive because he thinks it would be fun yes. right he wants to see how far he can get and you know they always say it's lonely at the top <laughs> so I bet Mihawk's like bored of the people that try to face him he yeah. probably hasn't had like a real fight in a while and even though Zoro didn't give him a like an actual fight he sees the potential that in the future Zoro might be someone who could give him a good fight so he wants him to survive he wants him to move forward so then Usopp 
Johnny and Yosako, uh, they leave to go chase down Nami while Zoro rests and Luffy prepares to fight for uh, to fight off against Don Krieg. And this is where Sanji opens the cooks to open up the deck of the Barati, uh, the Barati A, so that way uh, they can they can fight and not damage the actual restaurant front. Like they can just fight on the deck of it and like um, and fight there instead. Um, and the cooks are pretty good at this. They like pretty easily wipe out a bunch of the uh, Krieg pirates pretty effortlessly. Um, but then Pearl shows up, who is their second. Uh, their he's their second uh, unit commander, and he's like an impenetrable defense, and he poses a pretty big problem for them. Pearl shows up, and Pearl is this dude who is covered head to toe in shields, basically. Right, he has a giant shield covering his chest, two giant shields covering his legs, and two shields on his arm, and a shield on his head, I believe. Yeah. And they, his name is Pearl because they all like have a pearl looking yeah. thing in the center of each of the shields, right? So, this dude named Pearl shows up, he's covered head to toe in shields. He easily knocks two of the cooks out, um, causing some of the underlings to try and shoot Patty, but Sanji just like kicks him away. And he declares like his hands are the most important thing. That's why he fights with his legs, much like Zeph. Yeah, it's the right. first time we it's the first time we actually see Sanji fight. Because before when when he when we saw that he beat up full body, it was just, it was just a cut to a full body being bloody. So we, we didn't know how uh, Sanji fought up to this point. Yep, and as the the under or the like trainee of Zef, like he's Zef's apprentice, it would make sense that they would have the same fighting style. Like Zef would teach him his yep. fighting style. So Pearl, he's like. My armor is impenetrable, and I fought 61 people to the death, and they haven't even scratched me, right? Yep. And just as he says this, Krieg, who was, uh, like, fighting back Luffy, because Luffy, like, charged him earlier, he blasts uh, Luffy into Pearl, and this causes him to, like, hit his own head on his shield right like he fl face plants into his own shield armor um and this gives him a nosebleed and since this is like the first time that he's been actually hurt he starts to go crazy he goes berserk mode and he lights himself on fire as like a protection measure or something like that and uh sanji Seeing this man on fire, still chooses to attack him, but he says, like, you know, I'm a cook. I can't be afraid of a little fire, right? So he goes and he attacks Pearl, even though he's completely covered in flames. Uh, at this point, he, like, kick, he goes to kick him, and his leg catches on fire instantly. Um... And that Which, causes him. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Uh, that might come up again yeah. later. That might come oh up yeah, again yeah, later. yeah. Come, you know what? That later? is some. That that is some foreshadowing. I didn't. Okay, put two I don't know about foreshadowing. Yet. Maybe it's for. Go to. Go to. Okay. Go to. Go to. Anyway. So. Pearl's fire. So, let's go back to Sanji. Sanji kicks him. His leg catches on fire, and. He kind of backs off a little bit and but fire pearl being on fire becomes like a concern for krieg so krieg is tries to knock him out with a giant spike on a ball um but luffy just bounces it back to krieg with his fusen attack where he blows himself up um at, he bounces it back at krieg it hits the mass of the ship that krieg is on and the mass kind of falls over, bridging the two areas, uh, the restaurant and 
concrete ship. Um, and it knocks Pearl out. Yeah, it also knocks Pearl out. So, he, so, uh, he's, he, so he's out for a little bit. Yep. At the same time as this, uh, Jin is taking Zeph hostage, right? So Jin pulls out the shoddy. He has a shotgun. He pulls it on Zeph, and he's like, "We're gonna use him as hostage. Like, hand over the restaurant. Nobody has to get hurt." Um, but he kind of does hurt people because he snaps Zeph's uh, peg leg that he's walking on. Um, he tells Sanji that if you if you want Zeph to live. You have to leave the Baratier and just like let let this happen. Let let us take over the ship. Let us get the logbook, and everything is fine. You, I'll spare you because you fed me. Basically, yep. I'll let you live, right? Um, Sanji refuses, of course. Um, and then Pearl wakes up and attacks Sanji. Sanji tells Jin that you know he can't leave the ship because it's Zeph's pride and joy. And he says that he took Zeph's strength and dreams away from him. So he'll never let anything like that ever happen to him again. Yep, and this is where we get Sanji's backstory. So nine years ago, when he was about 10 years old, he was a busboy on the ship called the Orbit. And he had a very different personality and like philosophy about wasting food. like. He, uh, he mocked the crew for um, eating, like, the leftovers that they were throwing away. Like, like so, like, when people sent food back to the the, um, the, co- the kitchen or they, like, didn't finish their food, they would eat what was left over. And Sanji said that that was disgusting. They seemed to throw it away. Um, and they, like, mock him for it and said, like, you know, you don't know what it's like to be hungry, so you don't understand. But, we would, but you know, whatever, you're a kid, whatever. So then one night, Zeph's crew, um, he invades the ship. Um, and like ransacks it for their treasure, but not their food. He makes it very clear that we do not touch people's food because um, one of his crew members tries to take some of the food from the back and he's like, we don't do that here. So, like beats the shit out of him and he, uh, they, take, they take the treasure. However, Sanji stands up to them claiming that he'll find the mythical all blue, uh, the place where the four seas meet together, the east, north, east, north, East, West, North, and South Seas meet, um, and that that's where it's like it's a very mythical um, place. So Zeph's crew mocks him, they beat him up, and they leave him for dead. They throw him overboard, but then as he is drowning, uh, Zeph dives in to rescue him um, as his ship is being sucked into a whirlpool. So, two, so about two days later, Sanji wakes up on this barren rock with Zeph, and they have basically no food. Although Zeph does tell him that he has this little bit of food, which is like this little tiny bag, um, and that it's about five days worth of food if he's if he's careful. Um, but he also has this gigantic bag, like it's like six or seven times bigger. Um, and Sanji's like, "Why do you get all that food and I get nothing?" And he's like, I- "I'm I'm an adult. I eat more. You you only need this little bit of food." And he says, "All right, we'll sit on opposite ends of the rock. We'll face opposite directions, um, and we'll both keep a lookout for." ships uh, and don't turn around and don't come get me until there's a ship ready to to find us um so sanji uh he he like portions it out and he's like yeah this is this is five days of like normal food um but he makes it last for quite a while it's like uh 25 like he makes it uh last about 25 days which is which kind is of insane. insane yeah um However, we, it wasn't a big bag of food. It was like a dog. It was tiny. Like it was five days of like normal rations, like not even like yeah. good rations. And he makes it last for uh, twenty-five days. However, after seventy, after day seventy, which is forty-five yes. days with no food, he, he finally checks on Zeph, who is still alive with his gigantic bag of rations. And Sanji's like, "Well, but he doesn't he's like even a skeleton, need it." Though. He is very yeah. yeah he's like kind of <laughs> worn down. But he's, yeah. he's like, wow, like, he didn't even need all this food, and I'm over here starving. I'm going to take this food. So he tries to cut into the bag, and treasure falls out of it. And Zeph essentially makes this point where he's like, yeah, isn't it funny that uh, 
this treasure um, that everyone like kills and dies for means nothing when you're hungry. I can't even eat it. So this is also when Sanji notices Zeph doesn't have a leg. Um, and so we saw a scene earlier where Zeph was breaking off his own leg. And so that's how he survived for 70 days so far is because he broke his leg off and ate it over the course of... It they don't really say how long. Leg. Yeah, it was. It must have been pretty fucking. <laughs> yeah, and also like Sanji didn't even fucking hear him. Um, and when Sanji asked him why he would do that, why he would like both rescue him, give him this food, and also like take off his own leg uh, for Sanji, he tells him that uh, he had the same uh, dream as him. And that he explains that uh, he also wants to find the all blue, but everyone makes fun of him for it. But Sanji has the same dream and that he respects him for it. And then he also talks about how he wants to open up his own restaurant in the middle of the ocean to save hungry people like them. Um, and then 15 days later, a ship finally washes on the rock and rescues them. Um, or sorry, it doesn't wash up, but they, they find them on the rock and they rescue them. So this is 85 days of uh, being stranded. And to this day, Sanji has promised to protect Zeph uh, and the Barate with his life because um, Zeph gave up so much for him. Um, and that is why he cannot leave and he cannot surrender the ship to anybody. Because he has a huge debt to Zeph to pay. So, Luffy at this point is kind of pissed with Sanji for not defending himself. Um, and he decides to destroy the Baratier because maybe if he destroys it, Krieg will leave, right? Which is really kind of dumb thinking, but <laughs> it's you know, that's it's Luffy like it's it's very Luffy logic, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's not wrong, but also like defeats the purpose. Exactly, and it he, I feel like he thought Zeph was his friend, so why would he? Oh yeah. Destroys his, his his restaurant. But anyway, <laughs> um, Sanji tells him that you know you can't really understand the amount of debt that I have toward to Zeph. Like he basically saved my life. He he doesn't say that, but you know it's implied that you know Zeph saved his life. So Luffy can't really understand his debt to Zeph. But Luffy he replies he he starts thinking about Shanks. And he's like, you know, getting killed to repay your debt, or getting killed is no way to your to repay your debt. Um, he didn't save your life so that you could just throw it away and waste it away being a restaurant tour when you have your dream right. that you want to go after. Only a coward would do that. Um, Jin, he feels what Luffy's spitting. Like he feels. <laughs> He feels it, and he decides to leave Zeph and attack Pearl, destroying his defenses in one hit. And at this point, we learn that uh, Jin is the battle commander of the Creek Pirates. And after this, he challenges Sanji to a fight. He's like, "Mano e mano, hey, you gave me food, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that, but you know." I'm under orders here. I did you a favor. I got rid of Pearl. Let's let's have ourselves a fair fight and finally, you know, finish this. Um, while this is happening, Luffy ends up pissing Krieg off by declaring himself king of the pirates because of course he does. <laughs> and this sets up Krieg versus Luffy and Sanji versus Jin. Right. So first. We'll, we'll talk about uh, Sanji versus Jin. Um, so Jin basically kicks Sanji's ass. like <laughs> Pretty easily. Yeah, pretty easily. It's not even much of a contest. Like, uh, Jin uses his weapon of, weapons of choice are like these tonfas, but they have giant metal balls on the end. Um, and he's basically using this to break Sanji's bones like his attacks are so strong they're like pulverizing Sanji's bones as they hit him um and Krieg he's watching this he like reminisces 
about how much of a fearsome fighter Jin is on the battlefield. He's like, he's ruthless. He he has bloodlust. Like he doesn't let his enemies uh, survive or run away. Um, but back to the battle, Sanji at this point, after getting his ass kicked by Jin, he's taken so much damage that when he even when he does his own attacks, like it hurts him physically to do them, right? Um, Jin at this point has the upper hand and he's like on top of Sanji and he's about to finish Sanji off um, but it's important to note that before uh, he he finishes off Sanji before Jin finishes off Sanji before he delivers the finishing blow he stops and he yells out to Krieg you know I can't kill him Yep. He's he's like almost at tears at this point. He he's basically won, but he just can't kill Sanji. Krieg is pissed, right? But Jin is having flashbacks of Sanji feeding him when he was starving, right? And he says that that was the first time anyone was kind to him. That's and insane. because Yeah. This is I, like, like the first time or something. Yeah. Literally, when I read that, I was like, "The first time, bro!" Like, not even cream. Not even your, not even your mama. <laughs> oh, like, like <laughs> that's what that I thought. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "You ain't had nobody, bro." But nobody. Yeah, he that he says that was the first time anyone was ever kind to him, and because of that, he can't kill Sanji. Um, and he also asked for the. The entire Baratie ship and crew to be spared. Um, but Krieg is having none of this, right? He prepares a poison cannonball and he shoots it at basically everyone, but Krieg's crew, they know about this attack, so they have gas masks on them, right? So all of his crew who are like in the water or like hanging on to the side of the broken wreckage of the ship. They all put on gas masks, right? Luffy, he's running to interrupt the giant gas ball, but he's too late. And all he can do at this time while the gas ball is in the air is like knock out two grunts. He just knocks out two of uh, Creek's crew and he grabs their gas masks and he tosses them to Sanji and Jin. Right, as the giant gas bomb is in the air. Um, Luffy, at this point, he tossed the two gas masks to Sanji and Jin, but he forgot to grab a gas mask for himself. So he, he, he's panicking. But out of nowhere, a gas mask just appears right next to him. And at the last second before the bomb explodes, he puts on the gas mask. Boom. The gas oh, bomb explodes. Gas. And it, it spreads gas everywhere, right? And as the gas clears, uh, we see a scene. Jin, who was on top of Sanji at the time, about to deliver the final blow before he had to change of heart, he's forced a gas mask onto Sanji, right? But he doesn't have a gas mask on himself. Um, and Luffy realizes... The gas mask that appeared next to him at the last second, Jin threw it to him, right? And Jin is like bleeding from the eyes from yeah. the poison at this point. It's like really gruesome. Um, and this just pisses Luffy off. Like at this point, if he wasn't pissed before, he's really pissed now because he just watched this man sacrifice himself for not only Sanji, but him as well. He saved his life. Um, from from the actions of his own captain, like his captain is hurting him. Right? Exactly. Because also Creek ordered him not to put his own gas mask on because he's no longer a Creek pirate. So Luffy is pissed, and this sets up Creek v Luffy, right? So Luffy rushes Creek, pissed about how bad he's he's treated Jin, right? Like he's talked shit about Jin. He told them not to put the gas mask on, as we talked about earlier, right? Uh, just now. 
Um, and he's running up the mast that fell down earlier between the two boats, um, or between the restaurant boat and the wreckage of Creek's boat. Um, and as Luffy is running down the mast connecting the two, Creek starts firing metal needles at him, right? Like I said before, this man is basically Iron Man. Like, he has all the gadgets in his, yeah. in his uh, armor. But I also want to mention he has, like, shields, too. He has, a, he has a shield, too. So out of the shield, it opens up, and that's how he fired the gas bomb earlier. But it also apparently has a function where he can shoot metal needles or metal spikes, right? So he's firing that at Luffy. And Luffy doesn't dodge, right? He just gets stuck full of spikes. Yep. And it's pretty gruesome. Like, he's bleeding all over. Um, and so he's continued forward. And right as he pulls up on Krieg, like, he's right in front of him, Krieg pulls out a cape full of spikes and, like, protects himself with it. Like an armadillo. And Luffy just doesn't care. He punches, he, like, gum gum pistols the cape anyway. Like, punching the spikes spikes directly right yep and it knocks Krieg out but not really he gets back up right he gets back up and he hits luffy with his shield um luffy takes it or luffy doesn't take the shield but like he flips around and like manages to send a kick at Krieg and hits him um at this point Krieg turns his shield into a spear right but the spear has a special property where it also explodes on contact right luffy is a and he he starts like poking and prodding at luffy trying to hit him and luffy's dodging everywhere you know i think at one point he even calls him a monkey he's like stop being a monkey (laughs) and luffy like goes ooh uh, ah ah i thought that was hilarious like he starts imitating a a monkey um so oda's humor is great yes at least especially in early early one piece early and current i will say yes but so he's swinging the spear at luffy and eventually luffy breaks the tip of the spear but at this point it's basically a bomb on a stick because it still has the exploding property on it right Luffy hits him with a couple of gum gum pistols, and he even hits him with a gum gum gatling, but the armor that Krieg is wearing is just too strong. Um, Krieg decides at this point to fire a bunch of bombs and just destroy Luffy and basically everything along with it, along with him. And Luffy jumps into the air and he hits him with the gum gum bazooka, knocking him off the ship like knocking him and Krieg both off the ship um but the Krieg but the bombs that Krieg shot are still in the air and they basically blow up and cause huge amounts of damage to the ship the ship's like in wreckage at this point um out of the smoke Luffy appears and as him and Krieg are falling he hits him with another gum gum bazooka mid-air. And this is enough to like hurt Krieg, but he's not done yet. As they're both falling to their death, Krieg pulls out a net. Like he shoots a net from his armor and it wraps around Luffy. And this is really bad because if Luffy touches the water that's under them, he's gonna drown because he has a devil fruit. So Creek thinks it's GG, like checkmate, he's got him, right? Um, but Luffy figures out a way to get his legs out of the holes of the net. And he twists them around Creek's head. Like, he latches on to Creek's head and then he twists his legs up. He winds his legs up. And he manages to slam him onto the deck like he's he unwinds his legs really quickly and that force he uses to slam Krieg onto the deck this move he calls uh gum gum gavel gum gum giant gavel 
Yeah, giant gavel. I don't yeah. know if Luffy. I feel like he uses this uh, maybe. He, a few he used times it before. Later. I, oh, he also did it before. Um, I forget if it was against Kuro or Buggy, but he already. He, yeah, like it, it's pretty common. Um, it's also I, cool. It's cool not as at. common. It's not I, as common would, as like, like some other like, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like no, it's not a pistol or a Gatling or any of those things, but like, I guess also like, as the series goes on, it's like harder to like physically grab a lot of the exactly uh, the villains later on so he like doesn't get to use the like that but it's pretty common early though yeah yep um so he slams krieg and this takes krieg out uh but he, luffy's felt he's fallen into the sea in the net and this is the time that sanji jumps into the sea to save luffy's life um Unfortunately, Krieg gets back up again. Like, he's barely standing at this point, right? And it's like this moment of real tension because Luffy has given it his all at this point. Like, he's taken giant spikes. He's punched spikes. Like, Luffy, as we mentioned in earlier in our earlier episode, like, he's made of rubber, but he's weak to like being cut or, or sharp, yeah, sharp objects right yeah. so luffy has taken a lot of like damage to all these sharp objects and he's kind of in worse for wear at this point so the fact that creek gets up is kind of nuts um but as creek gets up he's standing barely Jin just comes up and knocks him out, right? Yeah, just like knocks him out one hit, yeah. Just one hit. He was barely standing anyway. Jin just finishes him off. And he says, it's time to go. Like, let's pack it up. I've, like, we've had enough at this point, right? Uh, during the fight, he was watching Luffy fight. And he was, like surprised or taken aback by the grit that luffy showed basically like the fact that he never gave up that he would never give up in pursuit of his dream that really like inspired Jin to see him trying so hard so when he comes up and he knocks out creek he's like he's basically giving it to luffy like yeah you've your your mental fortitude is like greater than anything i've ever seen so we're just gonna dip um he does promise sanji that he'll leave the restaurant alone and he also says that he wants to see luffy in the grand line um yep even though luffy's kind of passed out at this point um and so he wakes up a few days later um uh, like from his injuries and he tries to convince Sanji to join his crew again uh, Sanji declines him for the like, third time at this point um, saying that he needs to protect uh, the, the Baratier more than ever now um, although he will go to the Grand Line when Zeph finally acknowledges his skills and this is like and then like they start talking about their dreams this is a really cute scene where like Sanji starts telling Luffy about his dreams, finding it all blue, and like Zeph's watching them, and they're both like these like two like excited kids. Kids, um, yeah. And and like Zeph is just like watching them from below. And so when Sanji brings Luffy down to eat with them, the crew is like really weird and like really rude to him. They like tell him that his soup is disgusting. Um, they like basically tell him he's a shit cook. They hate him. They want to like they want to like beat him up because they can't stand him. And then Luffy's in the corner like I like the soup. Yeah. Um, and then after he storms out, um, they're like, they, he overhears them uh, telling Luffy that, yeah, Luffy, you're right, this is like the best soup we've ever had, but they need to get him to leave so he can follow his dream, which is kind of like what Luffy did to Kobe at the end of Orange Town. Exactly. Um, yeah, Oda, I, I had that too. Yeah. yeah, Oda loves doing this where he, he just like, his, his way to like get you to leave is to like make you mad and just like piss you the fuck off. And it so, gets you to to balls up you know yeah to, to show grit and uh so zef straight up asks luffy to take sanji with him um but this time luffy refuses saying that sanji 
uh, needs to want to join on his own. Um, and then uh, outside the Baratier, a giant uh, panda fish, which I think is something that would make up, but a giant panda fish spits Yusaku out, um, and he explains that they couldn't catch Nami, um, but that they followed her path, and she, she's headed towards a very dangerous place. And so Usopp, uh, Johnny, and Zoro are still on the ship headed towards trying to track her, and now um, they need to go and find her. Um, and so Sanji finally relents, finally decides to join uh, Luffy's crew, saying that since they both have foolish dreams, he might as well follow Luffy. Um, and they take like a little tiny ship, um, and they get ready to, to leave them three to follow another ship, to follow, to follow Nami, like following, following, following. Um, and then as they leave, um, Sanji tearfully he thanks Seth for saving his uh, Zeph for saving his life and taking him in and raising him and basically being his dad. Um, and he like thanks the whole crew and they all they all cry and they tell him goodbye and uh, they'll miss that him. That panel was crazy. Like he's on his hands and knees, right? Yeah. That's I'm so I started playing the One Piece card game recently and mm -hmm. that's like uh, like the resource system in the game. There's a version of it that has that scene. Um, oh, it's pretty it's cool. such a good fan yeah um and so they tell him bye as they set off to find Usopp Zoro Johnny and most importantly Nami um and that's where we'll end this episode um because we're we're gonna come back as they go to to find Nami in the next episode and hopefully find out what she did and maybe bring her back or maybe not I don't know we, we don't know you gotta, no, not yet you, you gotta, gotta tune, tune in. in um so I, this arc is so interesting to me. I think this arc. So much, we mentioned the start of the episode that like this is like what got me into it back in the days of like Poor Kids and like Maguzi and stuff like that. And I really like this arc. It's it's so funny. This arc has like some of like the coolest moments and then like some of the most forgettable stuff of all time. Like it's it has like it sets up the world of One Piece more so than any of the other arcs so far. Yeah. Um, and it shows us that like. The top of like the top of the world is farther than you Insane. think it is. Yeah, yeah. Like Mihawk shows up and destroys them, and it's like it really opens up the world in a way that we haven't seen up to this point. Um, but it's also the villain is, I would argue, the most forgotten villain in all yeah, of One Piece. Some people would say that Kuro is. Um, however, I don't think that that's true. Um, so like. In One Piece, there are three major villains that we know nothing about, um, uh, like up to this date in the current series. Uh, it's Kuro, Krieg, and somebody we won't see for quite a long time. But um, Krieg is the only one of those that we have not seen in like an anime only or like a, a like a non a non canonical capacity. Like Oda has, <clears throat> or at least the people who like do the anime, like one of them has like at least uh, shown the other two characters doing something since then. But Krieg has been completely forgotten about. Same with Jen. Like, it, yeah. it's like... It seems like he was just used to set up the stakes of like how big the world of One yeah. Piece. To ma basically make... Not just how big the world of One Piece is, but to specifically show how dangerous the Grand Line is. Yes. Which Luffy and crew are making a beeline for yeah because right? up, so, up to this point everyone's like you're 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 you know you're too big for your britches basically that like you don't know what you're doing and every time he just kind of wins um and now we're seeing this like thing of like yeah you could beat all these like little piddly guys but like when you meet a guy who's like actually powerful you don't stand a chance yet and he, he only survived because he he wants you to um yep and it, it's just like but also we got probably my favorite uh Probably one of my favorite antagonists of the entire series, which is Mihawk. I love him. He's so cool. Yes. Um, and we got probably my favorite Straw Hat. It's hard. I, I've there's some later that were pretty good, but I love Sanji. He's I love him. He's so cool to me. I've always liked him, even as a kid. Um, yeah. He he has this suave yeah. nature. Like also, Zoro it's just so cool. Is cool. He like kicks with his feet. Like he fights with his feet. Exactly. Like like Zoro. His his personification is like cool, like the cool aloof, like he doesn't give a fuck about anything type character. But Sanji's like the suave, like ladies man, you know, type character, and yeah. I can see why a lot of people like him. Is 
you're either a Zoro fan or a Sanji fan. There's like a divide. Yeah, you're probably not one of right? both. Yeah. 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 Um, it's also cool that we see a character. It's the first character we've seen since Zoro, who's been just like undisputably capable. Um, yeah. Like Nami and Usopp are just kind of like whatever. Um, but like Sanji is like actually an important part of the crew in terms of like the fighting strength. Um, he's also like the best cook in the series, basically. I, know, always, I just like him. I think he's super cool. There um, should be a king of cooks that, has, that that Sanji has to... Oh, that would be funny. There is actually a uh, one-shot manga about from the author of Food Wars starring Sanji. Oh, yeah. That yeah. would... That makes yeah. a lot of And also Toriko. I, uh, back when Toriko yeah. was out, they did a lot of crossovers and Sanji was in some of those. Yeah. Yeah, that... Yeah, I love Sanji. He's so cool. Mm -hmm. Um... So is there anything else you wanted to add before we get to the question of the day? Nah, I think that's it. Let's, okay. let's get to it. Um, so this comes from our friend Herndon, um, who asks us, what is the most uh, interesting or creative devil fruit? Ooh. Okay, so... Does he mean, like, creative as in shown? Or creative as in like the possible possi the possibilities of how the fruit can be used basically like because um, that's a distinction I guess so I I guess I guess whatever you feel like it okay I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a low key one in there okay I'm gonna throw the uh, gas gas fruit that we oh, see later on interesting because Why? I feel like that has the most usages that we 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 saw some of them this, this of course happens in a later arc but yeah we see some of them but he controls every gas every gas i guess that's true like, you can yeah, do some I crazy guess, stuff with that i guess like do you mean it's like does oda mean gas in the scientific sense or in like the like like the colloquial sense right because like air is a gas but like well, he, he does use air at one point to yes he take does the, he, like he takes the people. air out of yeah their lungs so that's yeah that's he, pretty okay I think his low key kind of busted yeah but, that's fair yeah, yeah. um I had, I had, that one didn't even occur to me actually I think all of those types of fruits are just like I would argue like not that creative because it's like you, you kind of I guess that one of those types is the most creative um i would def i definitely think that's the case for me i think the most creative is the clone clone fruit um mm. because like this is a fruit that allows you to like touch someone and then be uh be able to become them um per perfectly like perfect mimicry um and when we see this fruit it's a huge danger to the the straw hats because it's like used by an assassin and a spy and it totally throws a wrench in like, what they're trying to do. Um, and even later on, we'll see it again. And it also causes a lot of problems there, too. Like, it, it basically sends an entire nation into chaos. Um, yeah. And it's like, it, it's just, it not only requires you to be able to, to use your fruit discreetly, because, like, but you also have to know the people that you are taking on pretty well, or at least be able to pick up on mimicry. Uh, and like act very well to, to get by with them um, but yeah I, um, I I still stick with the clone clone fruit just because like you have to you have to be a creative person to be able to use it effectively mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's a good one that's definitely a good one yeah I, it's there, the one most applicable to like real world uses that's uses. yeah that's true even if you don't live in a world full of pirates you can still you still yeah you can just show fruit. up as your boss and say everyone has can leave work today <laughs> get someone, yeah. you, could, you could oh man if, you could, if you're in the right spot you could like be a politician and like yeah do some i thought crazy about that stuff. too yeah but i thought it would be way it would be super difficult to get there for a I, normal person yeah you would, it would, you would have to like know where to spring up at yeah. and like how like like a campaign event oh you could mm -hmm. oh you could do that so oh good. Yeah. yeah you could just you could go to like a campaign event and outside where the reporters are. You yep. just show up and then you're on news Eat and TV saying whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 
Yeah, you could you could cause some serious havoc with that fruit. Um, and like nobody can like. I, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty funny. Um, because all you have to do is like shake their hand like one of them. You like, hey, nice to meet you. You know, I'm, I'm 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 voting for you next time. And then you shake their hand and then you have their power. Boom. You have yep. them uh, forever. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think I think those I think it's my answer. I'm gonna stick with that. Okay. I'm gonna yeah. stick with the gas gas fruit. That's, I think I, I hadn't thought fruit. about that, so that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of Some Peace. Um, this has been the uh, Barati Bar, Barati A Arc. I never, I'm never, I'm glad we're done with this arc. So I'm not gonna say this fucking name of this restaurant ever again. Uh, <laughs> I hate it. Dang, it's uh, it's tragic. Um, so we're done with the Barati A Arc. Next time we will see you um, with the crew tracks down Nami. Um, so if you want to follow uh, the podcast on social media, we are at Some Peace Pod on pretty much everywhere that you find us. So uh, Twitter, uh, TikTok, Instagram. Um, I am at Sunny Girl L Y K on pretty much any platform that I'm on. And I'm Emperor Zone on most platforms, yes, including Twitter. I refuse to call it X. I yeah, I'll yeah, be no. calling it X. Screw that! Absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> when I type it into the search bar, it still says Twitter.com. So his mama named him Twitter. Oh <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, thanks for uh, listening, and we will catch you guys next time. See you.